I want to have a conversation with you guys today. Um, but before I start this video, I want to do a little disclaimer. Um, if you are not a Christian, I'm not going to be able to wear these because there's a blue glare. Um, you're probably going to want to exit out of this video if you have different beliefs, um, etc, etc. So just exit out now because I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ and God and church and all that stuff and probably going to want to leave. So, today is Sunday and every single Sunday me and my family go to church. The only time we don't go to church is if somebody's sick, you know, something comes up. Other than that, we're always in church. Today was the first Sunday in a super duper long time that, um, I had to like really red right now, that everything was going wrong. Everything was going wrong. Everything in its power. The demons were running wild and the devil was trying very hard to stop us from going this morning. First thing that happened when I woke up this morning, well, first things first, I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and I was burning up. Um, it was thirsty as crap, nauseated, totally disoriented, dizzy. Um, PMS was just in retrograde. It was just going insane, totally insane. Um, I could not, it was just amazing how bad it was. 3.30 in the morning. Went back to bed, woke up this morning. I got woke up at 7 a.m. by our kids. Now, our youngest has a habit of waking up usually around 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. He just does this because he's used to it. He gets up at 7 a.m. every weekday for school. So now he's like, he's in a routine. That's not really new. Um, but, so he got up. I got up had a cup of coffee, trying to like get myself together. I was just about to crack open my Bible for my morning Bible reading. And all of a sudden I get a notification on my phone saying that somebody had stolen money off of our debit card. So I went into the settings, I went into, it was trying to confirm that it was us or not. Of course it wasn't. And um, they locked up my card, just locked it up. Never question anything, just locked up the card. Um, it's on night able to be used. It's Sunday, so there's no banks open right now. There's nobody to talk to. Customer service, everything's shut down. So I'm pretty sure it was a scam. I think it was somebody trying to, they got what they wanted. They got the card locked up. Um, so the devil did that. We were supposed to pay our utilities today. Today's Sunday, and that's what I usually do. So the devil was like, gotcha. So then God had a way around that. So there was a virtual side and I just used the virtual on my phone until the actual physical card, sh new one shows back up. So that's done, that gets out of the way. As I'm in the midst of that, my daughter starts throwing up. She's in the bathroom puking. Um, nobody's sick in our house, nobody, everybody's fine. My husband goes and finds what's going on and she she's puking in our bathroom sink. She's not puking in the toilet, she's puking in the bathroom sink. We have a max about hour and a half before we're supposed to be to church. She says she's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. So now we have to wait about a half an hour to see if she's gonna be okay. You know, because if you have the stomach flu, you usually throw up about every 15 to 20 minutes the very first day. So you usually have to like wait to see what's gonna happen. Well, thankfully she didn't. But now we gotta clean the bathroom. So we're taking time from that. So then after that, my autistic son is having a bad day. Meanwhile, mind you, he has not had a bad day in probably like a whole week. He's been totally fine lately, no problems whatsoever. But the devil knew that he was trying to do something today. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew how to get on my nerves. So he cranked him up because the whole other situations didn't work. After that, um, my youngest son started acting up. Then my daughter started acting up. Then my husband started getting irritated. Then me and my husband were arguing. And then it just kind of went into a snowball effect and it kind of just tumbled from there and just kept going. So now we're in this massive giant snowball of frustration. The whole entire family's frustrated. And that's when I started to figure it out and realize and I stopped and paused and I realized today is Sunday. 
the devil's trying to prevent us from going to church. He's trying to find every single distraction that he possibly can. And that's what the devil does. He's the master of distraction. He will try to distract you so you're not focused on God's blessings and God's, you know, the whole purpose of going to church on Sundays. And the thing is, is that I said this to myself this morning was I was going to go to church today because we had such a great blessing happen to us yesterday. But that's not the only reason why I go to church. I go to church every Sunday, like I said. So we got to church. Finally, we just, I forced everybody. I said, I don't care. We're going. So we went. We get to church and it continues. Now we're in the church. We're in the building and it continues. The kids are still acting up. Things are still going wrong. I almost spilled coffee all over my brand new coat that I got yesterday. I specifically got this jacket for church because I was like, this is perfect for this weather. It's almost, it's like winter right now where it's like spring and winter and you know I almost ruined it so finally I'm starting to kind of catch on to what's happening because the way that things were happening it was very strange and it was just it wasn't right I started laughing because I knew how hard and pathetic the devil was being that he was trying so hard to get under my skin like just non-stop and I kept telling myself I'm not leaving this place I'm not stopping from being in you know in um relation to communion with God I'm not going to do it as I'm making this video right now, the devil keeps trying to stop me from speaking and he's making me stop and messing up my words and things like that. He's really today, I was, so finally I dropped the kids off in their classrooms at church and I was walking out, going to the worship center. I could feel the anxiety in my body. Like I could feel, I couldn't even breathe. Like I was panicking. So I went to the sanctuary, sat down and as I'm trying to catch my breath and I'm trying to collect myself, these random kids just pop up out of nowhere in the sanctuary and start jumping on the chairs next to me. And they're shaking like the whole entire chairs. And something just came over me. It was like, you need to just go to the upper balcony. So I went to the upper balcony and I sat up there. Finally, I had a moment of, you know, quiet and peace. Today's sermon was so ironic. And it was, it's not ironic. It was God speaking to me. It was about, you know, going through hard times, struggling and faith and trust. And as I'm listening to this sermon, I had a very, he's trying to over argue right now with my son's stuff. I had a very clear cut message that came in my mind. Yes, absolutely. It was a scene from The Chosen that I had watched one time where it was Simon's wife and she was in the kitchen and she just didn't feel like she was being seen by Jesus. She didn't feel like everything she was doing mattered. And she didn't feel like she mattered. She felt like she was, you know, and he looks at her and he says simply, I see you. And this came into my head as I was sitting in the altar and I wasn't sitting in the altars, but I was sitting up at the top and I broke. I just started crying. Jesus and God know my start, my struggles. They know, God knows when I'm going through it. He knows, and I had the same thing happen. I got home, I was flipping out, I was mad. I was just fed up and I felt guilty for a minute. But in my heart, God told me, you're, it's your kids, you know, and you're going through it right now. The kids are home, they're, they're on a midwinter break right now. And you've been with the kids for three days now. And it's hard being in a house, climbed up in a house with kids that are under the age of 10. And you're just, you know, you're going through it. It's fine to feel this way. It's fine to feel frustrated and angry and lost. But don't let it distract you from the many blessings that are to come and the blessings that are. And that you still have the ability to, to have that. So basically what I want to say is, is that if you're a Christian and you're going through this and you're just it's struggle after struggle after struggle and there's problems and it's kind of stupid like you're starting to they're like pathetic attacks you're just starting to see it's like pathetic everything around you is just pathetic that's the devil he is the master of distraction and that's what he does he's trying to distract you from the blessings that god has for your life the blessings that are to come he's trying to distract you from your relationship with god he doesn't want you to crack open your bible in the morning or in the evening or whatever he doesn't want you to go to church he doesn't want you to pray he doesn't want you to think about god or anything like that he doesn't want you to talk to god he doesn't want you to listen to christian music he doesn't want you to he wants you to stay miserable he wants you to stay sad he wants you to stay frustrated it was like today when I was in church, they had a really good song they were playing. It was the goodness of God. 
my son, even my youngest son, he was entranced when they were playing it in the worship center. And we got in the truck and we were on our way. I had a craving for tacos. I was like, I really want tacos for lunch. And I knew it was easy peasy, lemon squeezy lunch. Like, go get a box of party pack of tacos from Taco Bell, bring it home. They all can eat, whatever. And as we're in the drive-thru, the song starts playing that was in the worship center. And I had just started talking to my son because he wanted, he didn't think, he, he didn't understand it was a real song. He thought it was just church. I said, no, that's a real song. I said, there's real people that sing it. And all of a sudden, it just started playing on the radio. I broke in tears. Now, meanwhile, I'm in the drive-thru at Taco Bell. Like, I just, I can't just be bursting in tears while I'm trying to get dinner, get lunch. But that's when I realized right there, I said to my kids out loud, that don't tell me God's not real. And don't tell me that he don't listen to everything that we're going through. He knew. Even that moment right there, he was like, he put that on the radio for my son and me. That he knew what I was going through. And I know he hears me. I know he's listening to me right now. He knows what I'm going through. He knows what we all go through. He hears you. He hears me. He hears our prayers. He hears our struggles. He sees our struggles. He knows what we're going through. And he knows that we're human. And that even me, I'm saying this to myself as well. I get upset. I flip out. And I always think, that's it. I'm not good enough for God. No. That's what the devil wants you to believe. He doesn't want you to pursue your relationship with God. God knows that we're, we're, we're going to mess up. But that's where grace comes in. That's where our, you know... All of it comes in. He's here for us. He's our father, or if you want to put it in simpler terms, our dad in heaven. In heaven. He's he's for us. We are his kids. We're his children. We don't turn our kids away when they're going through struggles and they're acting up and they're doing bad. What do we do? We correct them. We help them. We, we guide them. That's what he does. And I know that's what he's doing to my life. And these little blips of today don't mean nothing to God. They don't mean anything. And even if you're going through a blip in your own life, it don't mean anything to him. It doesn't. It does. I mean, but he wants you to bring your struggles and your problems to him. And it was an eye opener today at church. I had to talk about this on YouTube. I had to. It was amazing how close God was to my family today. Like, it was like, I mean, you, you couldn't even get in. I mean, come on. The radio. I mean, it was just... A lot of people probably will hop on this video, non-Christians or atheists or anybody, and say, you know, well, it's just coincidental. I don't believe in coincidences, especially when it comes to God, I don't. And it was very powerful. It was very obvious. And it was very clear that he was trying to tell me, I see you, like he told me in church, well, now it's coming full circle. I see you. And I know what you're going through. And I'm here with you. And I'm trying really hard not to cry because I got makeup on. I washed off like almost all my makeup at church today. Like my mascara was like gone. I was like, why did I even wear makeup today? But um, I would have missed all of that today. If I was easily let, that distracted by the devil, I would have missed everything today. I would have missed all of the message that I learned at church today. I would have missed the music. I would have missed all of it. And it was funny too because when the when the music started in worship the worship section, I kept focusing on the violin, and then I kept focusing on the the drum because they had a couple of new musicians. And as quickly as that thought came in mind, something else came in mind that said, "You need to focus on the words." You can just stop. And it was like an inner peace just came over me. And I knew in that moment it was God that was like, you need to listen to what this song is saying. Close your ears or your mind and read what the words are. And you need to listen to this message today. This is important. This isn't a joke. And the song was the goodness of God. If you don't know what that song is, look it up. I've been going through so many struggles the past half a year now. I can't even name them off. And I was lost, man. 
still kind of am just in a valley. And I knew today God revealed himself to me and he was like, you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. And I know that he has plans for my life. I know now. I mean, I always knew, but it, it's very clear that there is something happening. He's, my pastor kept saying it too, that when, and I got the same message I did last week. When you feel like God's not, when you feel like nothing's happening and it's just like, and you're just like bored and you're like, well, and it's just stagnant. That's when God's doing the most. That's when God is, he's, he's doing all this extra stuff and he's making it happen. He's making these things happen. But us as humans, we have a hard time with, you know, patience. We're like, oh, come on. You know, it's like, we really want everything, but we don't understand that in these moments of darkness and when we're just, you know, there's lessons that are being taught there's things that are not being that you're starting to see and i had my lessons during this last season that it was about patience and about ex being grateful for what you have and gratitude and um and making a home and things like that and really looking at what you have before you get what you're asking for you got to stop drop and no i'm just kidding you got to stop and you really got to look at what you have first figure it out and then maybe you'll be ready for what's next but as of right now, you're not. And that's what God has been trying to tell me. And I really wasn't. I really wasn't thankful for what I had. I was really like last summer. Last summer, I was really, really bratty. I had a really, really low spirit. And I was just like, I had all these great things happen to me last year. And I was like, this is stupid. Like, this is not what he thought. Like, it was just negative, 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 negative. And... I know that God had to reveal things to me. He had to show me that. But what is the real reason why you're in the valley right now? What is the real reason why you're over here instead of being over there? There's a reason. And you're just not seeing it. I'm going to make you see it. You're going to see it. And that's what sometimes he does. I know this video is like all over the place. But the point of the video is if you're a Christian and you're in a valley and you don't think God sees or hears you, that's when he sees and hears you the most. And if you give your, when you, even when you're praying and you don't feel anything, you're like, I feel like I'm talking to the wall. You're not, trust me, I know, because I thought the same thing and trust me, you're not talking to the wall. He hears every single thing that you're saying and he does make it happen. I'm not even kidding, I'm not being corny. God will change your life in ways that you can't explain it. And you don't know how to explain it, but that's God. He's the God of impossible. He makes things happen that you cannot because he's God. That's what, that's what he does. And he loves us and we're his children and he doesn't like to see us suffer. He doesn't like to see us be like, oh. he, but he does guide us and he does mature us, our character. And he does, you know, like you're messing up. We are his children and he does want us to first learn things in the valley before we get to the top of that mountain. Because you're not ready to be at the top of that mountain yet. I know that I wasn't. And probably, maybe I'm still not. Maybe there, there's still some things that God wants to work with me. And there's things I have to learn about myself and about him and about my life in general before he's like, okay, you're ready now. But... I don't know. I don't know what his plans are. We're not supposed to know. But anyways, I just wanted to make this video to talk about this, about faith and God. And um, if it is Sunday you're watching this and you're like, and you really don't really know if you want to go to church, just go. Trust me. If you're not puking in the toilet with a fever of 103 and you're not like, Ugh, you know, just get up. You have able legs. Go. Um, if it's during the week and you're thinking about reading your Bible and you're sitting there and you're like, just do it. Crack it open because that's a distraction. I try to read at least one to two chapters a day. I'm in the book of Job right now. I'm rereading the book of Job because I didn't really understand it the first time I read it. I didn't really pay attention and I was like, whatever. And I was just trying to get it. So you see what I mean? God has to teach me a lot of stuff before I even get to the top of the mountain. So I have a hard time reading the Bible and he knows that I do. So he's got to teach me some things, but... 
All right, peace out, you guys. I hope that you guys are having a great day, night, evening, whenever you watch this video. And if it is a Sunday, go to church. Go to church. Peace out, you guys.